In topology, an open set is an abstract concept generalizing the idea of an open interval in the real line. The simplest example is in metric spaces, where open sets can be defined as those sets which contain an open ball around each of their points. However, an open set, in general, can be very abstract. Any collection of sets can be called open, as long as the union of an arbitrary number of open sets is open. The intersection of a finite number of open sets is open, and the space itself is open. These conditions are very loose, and they allow enormous flexibility in the choice of open sets. In the two extremes, every set can be open, or no set can be open but the space itself. In practice, however, open sets are usually chosen to be similar to the open intervals of the real line. The notion of an open set provides a fundamental way to speak of nearness of points in a topological space, without explicitly having a concept of distance defined. Once a choice of open sets is made, the properties of continuity, connectedness, and compactness, which use notions of nearness, can be defined using these open sets. Each choice of open sets for a space is called a topology. Although open sets and the topologies that they comprise are of central importance in point set topology, they are also used as an organizational tool in other important branches of mathematics. Examples of topologies include the Zariski topology in algebraic geometry that reflects the algebraic nature of varieties and the topology on a differential manifold in differential topology where each point within the space is contained in an open set that is homeomorphic to an open ball in a finite dimensional Euclidean space. Motivation. Intuitively, an open set provides a method to distinguish two points. For example, if about one point in a topological space there exists an open set not containing another point, the two points are referred to as topologically distinguishable. Therefore, topological spaces may be seen as a generalization of metric spaces. In the set of all real numbers, one has the natural Euclidean metric, that is, a function which measures the distance between two real numbers d equals x, y. Therefore, given a real number, one can speak of the set of all points close to that real number, that is, within epsilon of that real number. In essence, points within epsilon of x approximate x to an accuracy of degree epsilon. Note that epsilon greater than zero always but as epsilon becomes smaller and smaller, one obtains points that approximate x to a higher and higher degree of accuracy. For example, if x equals 0 in epsilon equals 1, the points within epsilon of x are precisely the points of the interval, that is, the set of all real numbers between minus 1 and 1. However, with epsilon equals 0.5, the points within epsilon of x are precisely the points of. Clearly, these points approximate x to a greater degree of accuracy compared to when epsilon equals 1. The previous discussion shows, for the case x equals 0, that one may approximate x to higher and higher degrees of accuracy by defining epsilon to be smaller and smaller. In particular, sets of the form give us a lot of information about points close to x equals 0. Thus, rather than speaking of a concrete Euclidean metric, one may use sets to describe points close to x. This innovative idea has far-reaching consequences, in particular, by defining different collections of sets containing zero. One may find different results regarding the distance between zero and other real numbers. For example, if we were to define R as the only such set for measuring distance, all points are close to zero since there is only one possible degree of accuracy one may achieve in approximating zero, being a member of R. Thus, we find that in some sense, every real number is distance zero away from zero. It may help in this case to think of the measure as being a binary condition. All things in R are equally close to zero, while any item that is not in R is not close to zero. In general, one refers to the family of sets containing zero, used to approximate zero. As a neighborhood basis, a member of this neighborhood basis is referred to as an open set. 
In fact, one may generalize these notions to an arbitrary set, rather than just the real numbers. In this case, given the point of that set, one may define a collection of sets around x, used to approximate x. Of course, this collection would have to satisfy certain properties for otherwise we may not have a well-defined method to measure distance. For example, every point in x should approximate x to some degree of accuracy. Thus x should be in this family. Once we begin to define smaller sets containing x, we tend to approximate x to a greater degree of accuracy. Bearing this in mind, one may define the remaining axioms that the family of sets about x is required to satisfy. Definitions The concept of open sets can be formalized with various degrees of generality, for example, Euclidean space A subset U of the Euclidean N space Rn is called open if, given any point x in U, there exists a real number epsilon greater than zero such that Given any point y in Rn whose Euclidean distance from x is smaller than epsilon, y also belongs to U. Equivalently, a subset U of Rn is open if every point in U has a neighborhood in Rn contained in U. Metric spaces A subset U of a metric space is called open if, given any point x in U, there exists a real number epsilon greater than zero such that Given any point y in M with d less than epsilon, y also belongs to U. Equivalently, U is open if every point in U has a neighborhood contained in U. This generalizes the Euclidean space example, since Euclidean space with the Euclidean distance is a metric space. Topological spaces In general topological spaces, the open sets can be almost anything, with different choices giving different spaces. Let be a set and be a family of sets. We say that is a topology on if. We call the sets in the open sets. Note that infinite intersections of open sets need not be open. For example, the intersection of all intervals of the form, where n is a positive integer, is the set 0, which is not open in the real line. Sets that can be constructed as the intersection of countably many open sets are denoted G delta sets. The topological definition of open sets generalizes the metric space definition. If one begins with a metric space and defines open sets as before, then the family of all open sets is a topology on the metric space. Every metric space is therefore, in a natural way, a topological space. There are, however, topological spaces that are not metric spaces. Properties The empty set is both open and closed. The set X that the topology is defined on is both open and closed. The union of any number of open sets is open. The intersection of a finite number of open sets is open. Uses Open sets have a fundamental importance in topology. The concept is required to define and make sense of topological space and other topological structures that deal with the notions of closeness and convergence for spaces such as metric spaces and uniform spaces. Every subset A of a topological space X contains a open set. The largest such open set is called the interior of A. It can be constructed by taking the union of all the open sets contained in A. Given topological spaces X and Y, A function F from X to Y is continuous if the pre-image of every open set in Y is open in X. The function f is called open if the image of every open set in X is open in Y. An open set on the real line has the characteristic property that it is a countable union of disjoint open intervals.